Hello everybody, welcome to Five Idiots. I'm Jimmy Fantastic and my character is Daka, level five now. Very exciting, the human fighter. Huge, huge excitement at getting level five. There you go. Oh, I forgot it was me next, sorry. <laughs> Uh, oh god, I've lost my little thing here. Hello everybody, I am Elliot the Nom, a level four, five, god damn it now, uh, Rock Gnome Cleric of the Life Domain. I am Thorgosnarp, a Goblin King, and a Sorcerer. <laughs> so I, love, I love goblin. the Goblin King, I love how they just... <laughs> <laughs> Gotta get it in. About, about the same, about <laughs> the same virtue of monarchy as the King of England right now, right? <laughs> wow. <laughs> and Dimitriov seems to be uh, busy. <laughs> Hello, everybody. I'm Dimitriov, level five warrior. Uh, trying to find some money. I'm desperate for money. Anyone in chat want to lend me some gold? I'll take it. <laughs> All right, uh, gentlemen. So <clears throat> we clear our voices and prepare for stream. So it's been two days since your return to Victa. Took you a day and a half to get back here. We've had several ballads in the meantime, which were quite uh, quite eventful, a lot of fun. Those, Each of those had their own, uh, their own, oh God, I don't even know how to describe them. Those were just, those were just exciting and fun to do. Um, if anybody has not, go ahead and open your character sheets and uh, take a long rest there to rejuvenate everything that you've got. Get all your hit points, get your spell slots back, get your abilities back, all of that good stuff. It's a little longer than 30 some odd feet, uh, but just so you know. <laughs> 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 All right, so um, we wake up on the morning of day four. One, two, three, four, day five. I'm sorry. We wake up on the morning of day five of 10 days <laughs> prior to the, the quote unquote decision having to be made uh, via Night Demon. Um, it was was the was the plan to kind of let, let's go back uh, let's let's reverse time just a little bit. Was the plan to meet at the rowdy gnome? Was the plan to meet in Kalon's office? What was the plan at the end of your your couple of days of rest and recuperation and, and internal thought? Um, I guess this is a pretty important thing: is to meet at the Rothwell house to see how much money we've got because uh, that's it's getting paid into there, isn't it? And we, you know, I don't know how much we're getting paid. I don't know if that was, if we were told so, how much we were getting paid. So you were already paid for the last one. Yep. If you remember, there was 50 gold in there and then each of you deposited, I think 10 more, which was at 90. And then each of you decided, screw it. We're just going to take it up to a hundred total. Mm. So you've got a hundred gold in the Rothwell house. <clears throat> which obviously is your safety deposit box that, uh, that DACA owns, um, or not really owns, but is in possession thereof. Um, beyond that, did we really, I don't think we really decided what you guys found on the bodies specifically. Unfortunately, there was no body of, uh, of Molaram to, <laughs> to, to, uh, to go over. Um, so we'll say that each of you found another ten gold pieces off of each of uh, off of each of the individuals that were uh, were killed therein in various forms of silver, copper, so on and so forth. Glorious. So feel free to add ten gold pieces to everybody. <clears throat> each each of you add ten gold pieces to your sheet. There you go. Yep. Where do I do that? It Probably should be at the very bottom of your sheet. It'll have gold pieces oh, listed. Yeah. Under inventory. I'm sorry. Under inventory at the yeah, very yeah, bottom. Yeah, yeah. I uh, I wake up late in the uh, morning uh, when it starts raining on top of this uh, on the rooftop of this house. Um, I yesterday I uh, was tricked I, into. I was just looking uh, at which house that was to make sure it wasn't anything of note. <laughs> yeah, no, I, it, it's raining, which. Uh, the the raining is what wakes me up. Um, the drops hitting my face. Uh, yesterday I ingested a large amount of a vile poison that the humans refer to as beer, um, and I am feeling kind of shit. 
<laughs> where were you where were you drinking last night Dado? i'm sorry uh, Flogel. i mean it's all a bit hazy um i was at um several pubs with uh a couple of friends and uh they kept buying me more beer, uh, saying that it was good for me. Um, at the time, I I was having fun, but today I realized that it is definitely a wild poison. Oh my okay, god! Okay, so give me give me a Constitution check, real quick. Give me a roll. Uh, Okay, so a couple of times you feel like you really want to allow the um, insides of your stomach to see the world, if you will, but uh, you're able to kind of hold that back a little bit. Yeah, um, you're, the, you're, the, you're... the ocean breeze and the raindrops is like uh, definitely uh, keeping me cooler and calm. Um, as, that's as what's you... helping me deal with it at the moment. Yeah, as you kind of wake up, as you said, right, you've got the, the, the soft the soft smell of of, of, of um, that, that fresh water smell as it kind of comes in off of the lake there. And um, to your right, you notice a small nest. And in this nest is, is a mother, mother seagull who's looking at you very, very precariously as she has hovered over a, a, a clutch of three eggs. And she doesn't seem startled by you more than, I don't want to say that you're welcome, but you've obviously been there for quite some time and she's gotten used to you. <laughs> Flipping seagulls. <laughs> uh, I look at the seagull and then I sigh and try to go back to sleep. <laughs> Okay, so so you ro you roll over, kind of wrap your cloak over your head a little bit, try to protect yourself from the uh, from the sunlight, which is probably the worst part of the hangover. And um, and what are, what's the rest of the party kind of doing now this morning? So, where are you guys meeting? Rothwell House. Uh, minus right? have... uh, minus Flargelsnar, because he's going to be late. We should all meet at the Rothwell House, I think, so that we can you know bank our money, right? Bank our money, make sure we got paid. Make sure we know how much money we've all got. That makes a sensible. That a, seems a sensible place to meet. I think. I agree. All right. So the three of you. No, no. Is, I'm, um, I've been um, I've been up all night, you know, thinking about you know stuff. So I'm also late. <laughs> so yeah. So you're contemplating life, as it were. Um, Dimitrov is Elon with you, or is he with um, with the men at arms? Elon is always with me. Wow, okay. Mm. <laughs> okay, so you walk into the Rothwell house. Obviously, um, uh, Daka, you're greeted. Um, you're all immediately uh, whisked back into your back area there. There's several lines of cages. Um, I don't want to call them cages, but several lines of iron bars that you can see that are... It's There's no privacy in the back, right? Mm. But there are several, you know, each each line of bars is, is separated by about five feet. And in each of these different lines of bars, there are several lock boxes placed that, you know, around the perimeter and any individual so that certain individuals, I should say, can get into their boxes privately. Um, as you know, the key to your uh, lock box would never open up any of the other lock boxes in there. Um, and... Um, you know, an individual walks back there with you, in fact, with a second key that also, you need two keys to open every single lock. Mm -hmm. You need a master key, and then you need the key that you possess. Um, you also know that if your key is ever lost, that, that it, it's impossible to duplicate those keys. They are, uh, they are somewhat enchanted, though you have no idea how it's done. The Rothwells will never share that secret. Um, and it is quite a pain to get a secondary key, even if they know exactly whom you are. So this key is probably, aside from your hand crossbow and maybe your badge, your your next most important possession. In fact, Doctor, what do you do with it when you're not when it's when you're traveling from place to place? It's a good question, isn't it? Flip me. Yeah. Didn't realize it was that valuable. <laughs> well, it's it's a, it's it's access to the Rothwell House lockboxes. 
Put it in the lockbox. Yeah, put it in the lockbox. That's a brilliant idea, Elliot. <laughs> um, I guess just keep it in, keep it in like you know a pocket, a pocket, a special pocket on my on my pants. <laughs> a special pocket in your pants. Okay, pocket. so and that's fine. So you enter in. Um, when you are ushered into this um, this room with these cages, with these lines of, uh, of bars, you're uh, taken to your station, you're taken to your lockbox. The secondary lock is popped, and then the individual asks for your key, which you then hand over, and that individual then pops the, the primary lock, takes their key out, takes your key out, hands it to you, and then leaves so that you can then have privacy. And the four of you are in there, and 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 your lockbox is now open, though not no, though not lit open. Right. So how much money's in there? How much do we get paid for the last job? So your fifty gold from the last job is already in there because you guys already came and verified that. Yeah, last and, time. Yep. But how much for the last job? Which last job? The last job. We haven't verified it since since the you know we did the first job right the first job to scout and everything. And there was a hundred in after the first job. But what about the second job? So there was never an agreement for this. So remember the last whoa, time we whoa, had a conversation, whoa. Kalon was going to the to the magistrates, to the three, I'm sorry, he is the magistrate, to the, to the council of three to determine what you're going to be offered for the continuation of this now, remember? Oh, wow. So we're not, we're not even getting paid for this. I'm sure you said the payment will go through. I'm sure you said that, Jack. <laughs> so the last time we talked about payment was when you last when you finally reported to Kalon that the job was complete, right? Right. But but that's the second job, though. I reported that that job was complete. Let's go and fuck Kalon up. We've reported to him twice. I've reported to him twice. I reported to him. And got okay, paid I'll go the back and review time. my notes. But I don't remember us having. I thought it was still the same job was continuing. Well, no, because we got paid for it. We've already been paid for it, right? And then we went back after we'd been paid the first time. Okay, we'll say that they've given you another 50, another writ of 50 for the secondary. Glorious. The secondary. Uh, uh, so there's 150 in there now. Glorious, right? 150. Woo! Look at <laughs> <laughs> And then, uh, so now, right, lads, um, we should probably put some money in, right, for, like, safekeeping. Um so how much do you like who whoever wants to put in the least we'll all put that much in uh right? daka i'm not putting any money in the box no I, i'm not putting in any either yeah i need to buy some plate armor uh or, or I, I i i've promised the uh money to buy some armor so um <clears throat> I'm, I'm not gonna put any in this time obviously i will do in the future but at the moment right now i've got priorities to spend that money on you know Right. Well, do you want your money out? That's in. Uh, yeah, if I can. Like, I, I need as much money as I can get my hands on in so, five days. So you can get thirty-seven and a half out. Okay. So I'll, I'll withdraw that. Thank you. And I'll have none left. So that puts me on. Just making it even thirty-eight, even though, you know, kid. Yeah, and yeah, then yeah, Dimmy yeah. or Dimmy, and then Doctor just we'll just round up what's in the box as well. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna have you guys convert to Four. silver and all that craziness. Mm. We we do need to remember so now that we we... Money. We're, we're just gonna withdraw our thirty seven and a half and then deposit it again and then uh, do that to generate more money. No, we're not gonna do that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Do you know what? Nice, do you know nice. what? I'm gonna deposit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I'm gonna put forty in anyway, and then. So I'll, I'll I'll keep it all separate here now. Um, okay, yeah, yeah. It no longer you splits. Forty gold, Jim. Yeah. You got forty gold. Dakar, you got forty gold. Yeah, yeah, forty-four, mate. So I'm gonna keep all them it. scimitars. All them scimitars got me a bit of money. <laughs> like, do any of you guys so like while we're here? Um, uh, Dakar, Elliot, and Flagel. Um, have any of you guys got any ideas on how to make some real quick money in five days before we go how back? How much money do you need? You can have some of my money, yeah. I how need like be? I need like a hundred and what was it, sixty eight, so two twenty hundred and twenty two gold. Okay, we don't have that yeah. much money. <laughs> That's a lot of I money, have, Dimitri. I have, I, have 60, <laughs> I have sixty eight gold. That you can I have. mean like can I can I sell my armor, like the plate armor that I've got to have in exchange like because that that might work so you've got chain mail armor it's currently used and it's currently fitted to you so you theoretically could sell it 
Well, if she's and either find somebody her. who's like sized or try to sell it back to Miss Pelled Tree, but it'll have a much less value because more than likely it'll be disassembled and then utilized again. Okay, so roughly how much are we talking for my armor? Yeah, let's let's see what how much did that cost you in the beginning? Let me find out here. Oh, it was about two thousand gold. Yeah, I'm sure it was. I'm sure it was. <laughs> <laughs> that is how much full plate costs, I think. But um, well, there, there's a little. This is a smaller town, Jim. So there is a little bit of uh, of up pricing going on here. I mean, it's not it's not massively important. I I, I can solve that issue when we get to it. So I don't want to hold up the party. I was just like, no, no, keep going. We're good. I can look it up real quick. I mean, that's I a lot. I can, I can rob someone. Like, like, like we've we've gone, we've gone to bloody, you know, three days travel to this manor. We've investigated the manor. We've killed God knows how many cultists, and we've still only been paid one hundred and fifty pound, one hundred and fifty gold, right? So you want a lot of money, Jim? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. 190 is a lot of money. That's what I'm saying, right? Like 190 okay. is a um, lot. You, she she would offer you 15 gold uh, for your chain mail. 15. All right, okay. 190 right. Okay. is a lot. I'll bear that in mind. So that puts me what to 83, further than 107. Mm. I can have my 68 gold. I, I mean, wait, like, wait, wait, what did I just hear? Did I have? Did I hear Flargal snarp? I think he's really hungover. I think. He's <laughs> like, <laughs> I know, right? Really, did really I just hear him over. offer everything he owns <laughs> in the form of cash? We'll, we'll think on this. We'll think on this. Like we can move on. It's, it's fine. I mean, what? So what? Like how? How long we we got? Like six days before we have to go back to uh, Night Demon, right? Yes, you wouldn't know five days because it was a day and a half. To, I'm sorry, six days. Yes, day yeah. and a half to get here. Two days for the ballads. Is there anything that anyone is burning to do in this in this town or this village? Or I need tell to you visit what, the hat shop. There's one thing. <laughs> hat shop. Okay. There's one thing I've done, which is buy loads of crossbow bolts. <laughs> right. There you go. Okay, so I think we we I'm happy to escort Elliot to the uh, the hat shop. I mean, I I don't really need an escort to be fair to go to the hat shop. It's, <laughs> it is a pretty nice part of town. Well, I mean, like, with me. I mean, like, I mean, like, I was I was for like necessary. two gold, you know, two gold. I'll take you there. Sure oh, I see, I see, I see. Oh, right, like, like, payment for services. Well. <laughs> there is there is a there is a silver ring on your finger, Dmitriov. That. <laughs> I think it could find its way to a pawn shop. Yeah, probably you know that got, that ring is, that is worth... more important than the armor itself, though. That's the problem. <laughs> I seem to remember negating, like, 7 million points of damage because of that ring. So. Well, you say negating, more like <laughs> transferring. <laughs> more like transferring. <laughs> totally negated. <laughs> ne nearly killing Elliot. <laughs> So yeah, so so Dimitri of you so let's go back over that, right? You owe 190 gold. Yep. Right? And and you're now after two days now, your um Hancocks are ready, right? She needed a day for each of them. Yeah. So that the money's not for the Hancocks, it's for the it's No, no, I know. I'm just saying so your Hancocks are ready, and then she needed an additional four days, I believe, for the for the armor. Oh, we got time, yeah. It's not like Yeah, so yeah, just keep yeah, that in mind. Yeah, yeah. Um Let's see, uh, Flargal Snarp, you have, you know, you have, a re 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 uh, going back over yours, you gained some small amount of information from Oriolensis, and you have a, a, a new ring on your finger. Yep. And, uh, Daka, you have to figure out what the hell you're going to do with this kid. Mm -hmm. And Eliad is just mind-screwed and trying to figure out where his whole place in this thing is. Especially considering he now is in possession of um, a new holy symbol that used to be that used to uh, uh, be owned by his uh, master. Which reminds me, I got to make that as an item too. That's the one thing I forgot to make. So Druthrig, Druthrig Cobblefoot's um, platinum holy symbol. And Elliot also needs to go find his hat. <laughs> well, I'm happy to escort Elliot to the hat shop. 
Okay, Dimitri, let us venture to the hat shop together. Let's go. All right, so you walk into the hat shop. Very simple place, right? Weathermores. It's down here on the south edge of the map. That's the tanner slash cloth eater. And uh, you walk in and immediately there's, I mean, just sitting there waiting for you on this beautiful little, uh, we'll say it's like a velvet purple pillow, is this perfectly sized. I mean, you can, you look at the hat and you can tell this thing is going to fit perfectly on your, on your, on your beautifully domed skull, right? I mean, you say perfectly. <laughs> 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 might fall off once or twice. I get the idea. If I look at it. Well, I mean, you know, in all fairness, there is combat to be thought about. But yes, right, I mean... right. And also mild inclination of the head. <laughs> so, how much did that hat? Did you already pay for that hat? I can't remember. <laughs> Neither can I. But, um, we'll, we'll say the hat costs you one gold because it is a it is a custom piece. Wait, so do I, did, did I already pay the gold, or do I need to I'm pay I'm gonna say, gold? since you don't remember, Elliot, who has the best memory of anybody here, I'll say no. <laughs> okay, cool. I'll pay the gold now, then, for the hat. Hello, hello, hat person. I'm, I'm here to pick up my hat. <laughs> and then you, you, they immediately, you know, open hand to the, to the, to the beautiful purple um, pillow, and, and right on top of that is this amazing, I mean, it's just, it is perfectly sized for you, Elliot. It's, you know, they went, and you, you think back to when they took the measurements and it was, you know, around the skull and then you asked for it, you know, slightly an inch above the eyebrows, covering just the back of the skull itself. They took measurements of how high the skull was from the top of the eyebrows up so there would be just enough room for, for air movement. So on. It's, a, it's just this thing of beauty. Wow, that is a really fantastic hat. I can clearly see that the hatmanship is of the highest quality. Would you care to try it on? Oh, I, I, very, I would love to try it on. Yeah, I'm going to put that thing on right now and never take it off. <laughs> what are you doing, Jim? So uh, they, they pick the hat up, twist around immediately, and hand it to you in reverence. I take the hat from them. I'm very excited. And I, you know, I, lo I duck my head a little bit and I, and I put the hat on. <laughs> It fits very well. <laughs> it's a perfect hat. <laughs> Ideal for a gnome. You'll notice he had to dig his camera back <laughs> in order to fit it. <laughs> oh my god. Amazing. <laughs> Elliot, that I'm is... Just uh... imagining Elliot going before Night Demon. <laughs> That, that, that is a mighty fine hat. Elliot. Thank oh, you, yeah. Dimitriov. It's it's very nice hat, isn't it? It's stunning. It's stunning. <laughs> so, Dimitriov, what is your reaction to this beautiful hat? Uh, I'm I'm like uh, amazed. I'm uh, appreciative, and I uh, I feel like I feel a little bit of joy within myself because I, I we we nearly lost Elliot for a while, and uh, it, it, it's good to see him like have the hat and like become like he like i've noticed within my character that the uh, eliod seems somewhat back with us you know like we did lose him for a, a session or two and uh yeah like quietly my heart warms with the uh the sight of the gnome coming back to us a gnome is no gnome without a hat <laughs> you guys are killing me all right. So after you're done with the at the hat shop, um, I'm assuming Elliot that you're 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 done and happy with. <laughs> I'm assuming you're. <laughs> I'm assuming you're done with with that activity. What do, what happens next then? So we've gone to the Rothwell house. We've gone to to the hat makers. Um, Dimitri, are, are you going back to get your Hancocks now? Yes, I will. I will go and see Miss Bell. Uh, or is this Miss Pell Tree? Isn't it? It's not the uh, yeah. Yeah, it's Miss oh. Pell Tree. Yeah, Miss Pell. We're going to go and see Miss Pell. Um, I don't know if you guys want to come with me, but yeah, I'm going to go and see Miss Pell. Might as well. We're a party, aren't we? Well, supposedly. So, you know, so Dimitri, you're, you're very, very, like... So you, you think, you think as, as you're making this walk, right, you think back to when you first designed these Hancocks, right? Because... You, you know, you, you were always worried about different means of, of battle within these woods, right? Because you're always assigned to these woods. You were assigned to different various portions. 
um, tree lines that were closer together, tree lines that were a little bit more separated. Generally speaking, you only had 15 to 20 feet of fighting space before a ranged weapon was basically useless, right? Mm -hmm. And um, you design these weapons as a means of getting around the need for ranged weaponry, right? Because it, it was something where you didn't, you didn't, you wouldn't have time to take aim per se, you know, per se. You wouldn't have time to take aim. Um, you didn't want to have uh, knocking of arrows, pulling of crossbows. It had to be a quick released weapon, right? Yeah. And then you think back to your conversation with Pell, and 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 you're you're going over how this started as a project, and it is now like you're li you're crossing over into a good, honest weapon that somebody else is actually going to leave their mark on as well, right? And you're somewhat honored by that because you think to the you think to the you would that she's going to be utilizing. You look at the design or the thought process that she had. The the um, the heads for these uh, tomahawks seem to be a little more sleek, yet still more. There's still more meat to them, right? They're, instead of being like a shorter head, they're 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 slightly longer and elongated. Um, and you can just imagine how this weapon is now going to act in combat. You're quite excited about it, in, in fact, because this is what warriors get excited about, right? This is something that, that you've had on your hip for God knows how many years, and this will now be, you know, effectively Hancock 2.0. Yeah, for sure. Like, I, I mean, like, <clears throat> the, the, the reason it's called a Hancock, by the way, for, for anyone, uh, is because the blacksmith that helped me design it was Hancock the blacksmith. Um, and I I chose to name it after his namesake. So there were there was a time where uh, Hancock and I were looking for something that was going to help in the skirmishes. Like Jetpool says, a short range combat. That I mean, it's a weapon that you use predominantly out of your peripheral vision. So you know, like if if you if you're fighting, like I'm an axe man. So like I, a lot of my combat is like this and then you you obviously have assailants coming from other directions especially with trees around and stuff like that so the hancock is a weapon just to like it's not a it's not a killer it's not like necessarily a a, a death weapon or anything like that it is a it's a deterrent it's a delayer and it, it keeps you in the combat for uh, a longer time so like yeah for me like it the the whole story with me and Hancock is another story that we might find out at some point. But for like, it, it was a great honor, and um, I he's highly esteemed uh, for me as well, like as a blacksmith. And um, seeing what Misspelled has done with the uh, the the Cox is breathtaking, and uh, I'm in awe <clears throat> and uh, excited to to try them out. Uh, and give them a go and uh, yeah yeah i feel like as we're walking along to to go and get it i feel joyed i feel happy i feel like uh yeah i feel like i've I've been lost for a little while and i feel like i'm getting it together and i've got somewhere to go and i've got a, i've got a reason to be you know well yeah so you you and and correct me if i'm wrong but you feel somewhat naked without him it's almost like not having oh yeah armor on right you're yeah. used to, in, in fact, as you walk every now and then, right, your hand just naturally goes almost like a gunfighter, right, just to verify that they're there and there's nothing on your hips. Yeah, for sure. Like, and where I've had one missing for, like, a week or so, like, yeah, like you say, it's like your hand naturally, like, we're, like they, they're, they're almost like an extension of my arms, if that makes sense. So, like, my hand will naturally, like, go to the place that I keep them and obviously with them not being there. Um, like it's going to be a bit weird at first, I think, like with the new ones, because they might not be exactly the same weight and what what have you. So it might, it might feel a bit funny at first, but I'm I'm sure I'll slip into the uh, rhythm of them soon enough. Might take a while to get used to having your hands on a different cock. Yeah, exactly, Jim. I mean, like it's 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 pretty different. Like, they, they, he's got a cock, Jim. Yeah, they're a different texture, you know. Like, it's... <laughs> All right, so so you so um, Elliot, you are walking with with Dimitriev here, right? He's come with you to pick up your hat. And, yeah, I go with and, him to the blacksmith. Yeah, and Elon is with you as well. And you, it's it's interesting, right? It's like you know, 
it, when um, with um, you kind of he's got this look of a gnomish child, right? Right before Nismus. And he's got this look of um, <laughs> of, of uh, <laughs> like a dude has got to turn off his mic so he can't hear him laughing. And it's it's just it's like he's he's getting a new gift, right? From Saint 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 Nicholas, right? G N I C K, mm. and um, and you know you, you can just tell that it's, it's it's been you know two days of travel, one half one and a half day of travel, and then two days. Everybody feels a little bit lighter, right, Elliot? Even yourself, even though you're still in deep thought, even though you're still contemplating this and and losing sleep to some point, though it's not a restless losing of sleep, it's a contemplative one. The whole party feels a little bit lighter, right? Yeah, yeah, for sure. And I've seen the same the same lustful expression on Demetrius' face uh, as as the uh, the great gnomish tinkers. Yeah, when they when they conceive of some, you know, new invention or something. Yeah, I know exactly what he's what he's thinking. And and yeah, I am, I am, I'm I'm obsessed. I'm absolutely obsessed at this point. But I am, I am, you know, feeling a bit a bit lighter for sure. So you you approach um you approach the uh, the blacksmith, um, Demetriev. You walk up again, Elliot. You're right along the side. So is Elin. You knock on the door, and immediately you see the familiar face of Pell as she opens the door. Her elven ears, you know, protruding from her from her hair, <clears throat> and she oh, she, and, you know, she's very excited. You know, she 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 had every idea that like morning of the second day you were going to be here right it wasn't going to be like oh, i'm gonna wait till 4 p.m and you're like nope. sun up and you're there yep um, absolutely. you know and she um she welcomes you in she welcomes you in and um she immediately brings you over to that familiar work table um and she folds back you know a, a lamb skin again and there you see um her inclination of the two handcocks they are very the heads the 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 tomahawk heads are very sleek the difference the main difference that you see in hers versus the ones that you designed you and you and hancock designed them to have the counterweight at the base of the of the shaft that you hold when you throw right you can see that because the u wood is much lighter that she's placed a counterweight spike on the back of the tomahawk head itself. Amazing. Um, she brings you over, right? And she 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 places one of them in your hands, cool. and um, closes. She she delicately closes your fingers around it, places your thumb around as well, about an inch from the bottom of the shaft, and 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 she says, "How comfortable is that?" And she kind of looks at it and she takes out a, a, a light blade and carves where your fingers just puts little notches where your fingers are in. And she says, she says, one moment, she turns around and she takes and she slowly carves out very small indentations where your fingers would rest. She puts it back in your hand again, takes it away, takes a little bit out of where your index finger would rest, puts it back in your hand shapes out the the back of the thumb slightly and puts it back and when and that third time when she puts it back in your hand it feels as if it's something you've been holding for your entire lifetime Boy. and it nice. is it is beautifully weighted to the front that it as you hold it at different angles it does not feel heavy in any of those angles it's a mighty fine job you've done here i'm um ecstatic and overwhelmed and i i want to thank you deeply um i i never imagined that you would do such a wonderful job then she looks and then you look down at um at them and there are some elvish runes carved into the wooden haft just below where the head um is slid on and then um knotted with a uh with, with a nail at the top. What what do the runes mean? So she looks at you and she says, um, in them is just carved. I always like to leave, whenever I do anything custom, I leave a small message of, of, uh, of what the intention is for that weapon or that armor. And these, it's a simple, it's not magical or anything, but it's just something that I like to do. And these both say true flight. 
It's a, it's an honor. Thank you very much. Um, <clears throat> I can't, I can't uh, articulate how uh, overwhelmed I am by your amazing job, and um, I, I think you're a fantastic blacksmith, and uh, I, I'm honored to have these Hancocks. So, um, and then remember now, and I'll add them to your sheet here as well, but remember now, these are now plus one weapons. There's also a plus one to retrieve. So now instead of a 12 plus on your dexterity roll, it's an 11 plus. Cool. And if there is any enemy that is um, that has resistances to um, to piercing, which is what we consider this weapon, typically you could say slashing or piercing, but anybody with resistances to piercing, it negates that resistance. Amazing. So when you throw them. So um, she delicately ties the, um, the, the leather cords to them and then hands them to you. And, and again, just thanks you pro profusely for allowing her to now create these and then hopefully make some money off of those herself. Oh, the honor is mine. Um, if, if you don't mind, I'm just going to take these for a spin. So uh, I, I'm going to head out into her back range. And uh, and I'm gonna throw some cocks all over the place, and uh, I'm, I'm gonna feel them through my fingers, and uh, I'm gonna give the. I just want to get used to them for a little bit before we hit combat, you know. So I wanna, I'm gonna spend like a good like half hour, like maybe 45 minutes, just like tossing them, um, giving them a good like flick through the wrist, and uh, you know, I'm gonna. Daka. <clears throat> I, I really want to feel the weight of these weapons, and like, I need to get like, because honestly, these are lifesavers, right? These are lifesavers, so I need to. Well, yeah, uh, and they're, then they're and what they are. I mean, they are just that. They're phenomenally balanced. They're beautiful. I mean, it's you know, but they also have that look of like they're going to take a beating, right? Like this is you 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 get the feeling that that the way the way that they've been. <laughs> I'm sorry, Jim. <laughs> the way that they've been. <laughs> Cut the way they've been crafted, you could, they could hit they could hit things that are very hard and still make their way uh -huh. <laughs> and so, still yeah. not be damaged in any way. <laughs> so after going out the back and half hour of tossing, I, uh, I went back <laughs> in and uh, and I, I bow to the tree and I just say these are the finest cocks I've ever seen. <laughs> like honestly, I'm overwhelmed and. Um, thank you so much, um, and I will see you soon for my armor as well. Yep, and then she kind of, she she obviously thanks you back, but then she, she kind of nods over to her left, and you see the beginning of what must be the breastplate that she's working on for you. It's, it's, it's still, it's not fully shaped, but you can see a neck starting to be formed into it. You can see arm, um, uh, arm, a hole, not holes, but you know what I mean, the designs where... The arm would come in. You can see the, the 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 roundness of the chest starting to appear in that as well. And she says, "Oh yes, it's um, I will I will ensure that this is done on time for you. I've, I've got to assume that these are very necessary for the work that you will be um, undertaking." Again, just massive appreciation. I think you're an amazing player. I I will tell of your work to people that I come across. If any, if if uh, there's a recommendation that needs. Um, being recommended or anything like that, I, I yeah. will uh, point people in your direction. As you're outside, as you're looking at these, I mean, she is probably the finest blacksmith. I mean, she rivals the Scouser blacksmiths back in um, um, back in your back in your home location, and the Scousers are well known blacksmiths, right? There, it's it's not easy to become a Scouser. It really isn't, and and, and it takes many many years of of practice and. You know, to 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 rise to the level of Scouser and for Hancock himself to have gotten there, and then for her to to have eclipsed that is, as far as you're concerned, is an amazing sight. Um, now, in all fairness, you've never really worked with an Elven blacksmith before. Nope. But now you know why they are so well regarded. And, uh, you almost wonder, in fact, what it, what's it, what would it be like if you took this back and and shared it with um, with Hancock or, or some of the other Scousers? I mean, that may be something that I look to do in the future. But I take a deep bow, 
I, uh, I thank her one last time and I say I will see you shortly and I bid her a good day and I, I walk out into the sunlight. Okay, Flargo, so you, you it's been a couple hours and you rise up again. You feel a little bit better, right? It's like that, that hair of the dog sleep, right? You have that hangover, so you lay the head back down. You rise back up. Um, the, the rain has been soft. It hasn't been a heavy rain by any means, but it's enough that it kind of, it's got that refreshing feel, right? It's cool to the touch. Um, it's, it's not an overly hot day, but it still is a good refreshing feel. What are, what are you doing on this rooftop now? You look over to your right, you kind of roll over and there's your seagull friend just staring at you and gives you a couple of, a couple of quick squawks at you, almost like a wake up asshole. Yeah, I realize I gotta get away from this seagull. Uh, that's uh, it's killing me. The noise. Uh, so, <laughs> so <laughs> I uh, don't know what I'm doing. I need food. So what's the plan now? Where would you all meet after kind of this? Because we got to get the party kind of back together, right? We got to have some discussions here, decide what's going to kind of happen. Because we got a we've got a five day plus or minus um, determination of what the hell is going to go on. Um, Daka, you know you will eventually have to go back and talk to Kalon to see what the what the uh, what the Council of Three has decided mm. um, in regards to what it is that you've reported. Um, Elliot, you're still, like you said, you, you had a great conversation and, but you've been very contemplative and I'm sure that there is, uh, it, at some point this is going to start to spur you to converse with the others, right? I mean, this is not something that you're going to hold in forever. I mean, they're just as, just as, uh, they're just as involved as you are, though you do feel the burden of the choice on your shoulders and your shoulders alone. Yeah, I mean, I, well, I mean, yes and no. I mean, I definitely see this as part of it. Um, um, and, and you know, I, I've spent so long thinking about it at this point. You know, it's been a few days and I'm I'm going nowhere, really. So I want to talk to the others about it and I want to talk to the others to find out what they want to do. Um, I'll, I'll tell them about uh, the ring if they don't already know. I'm not sure if they do. Uh, and, and about we could go and talk to him, but yeah, I also, you know, I, I, I personally am not sure if that's a, a great idea or, or, or not, and maybe we should be doing something else in the meantime, trying some more research or something. But, so, but I want to talk to you others about this, is yeah, like where I'm at. So the rowdy known then? Yeah. Cool. Um, out of character. Yes. Is there any Ooh. way to? Banish. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> Is there any way to like banish old gods? Like not fight them, but just Oh like... banish old gods. Okay, so because there is a spell called banish. Um like is that a thing? Um what's his name? Uh, Molaram did try to banish uh Dimitriov. I'm sorry, Daka. And it failed. So there is a spell for banishment, yes. But that's like temporary. I mean, like, is there any way to like? Oh, okay. No worries. No worries. So just... No, no, that's okay. Well, are, are the are, are is is this? Well, I mean, maybe we shouldn't ask too much. We should point out. I never mind. Let's move on. <laughs> I love you. What, what did you say? <laughs> oh, I've got an amazing question. <laughs> Fuck you, Jimmy. Don't worry. We'll, we'll worry. Well, I just don't want to. I don't want to like do spoilers and stuff, right? Like, it's better if you just find out things that as we go along, right? We don't. We well, don't well, so what, what, well, see, but this is part of it, right? Like, this is the contemplative mind. So if you have a question, ask it. I'll be honest with you. Well, I'll be like, I, I ain't answering that one. You would know, or okay. Yeah, it's so, okay to ask things that our characters would know, right? Like that's that's yeah, really or well, just yeah. But that's, I'm not I sure mean, if I I would like because I don't know anything. None of us know anything about old gods, right? Is the thing. Mm. Old one. Where old did one, they yeah. go, right? So if they if they went away, there must have been a reason that they went away, right? Like that's what I'm thinking. I'm Holy thinking bombs. they wouldn't just choose to go away and disappear. Like something must have got rid of them before. Maybe they did so, just choose to go away, though, right? Because they just choose to go away. You're a god, right, Jim? You're a god. Exactly, but like exactly, yeah, right? Like they're not they're not going to be driven by, you know, well, normal... you don't just disappear. 
That's the thing, though, right? That they're not like they don't give a single flip about us at all, right? So why does this one like? Why has he got the girls? Why does he care about them? Why is he even talking to us? You know, it seems like not we're like not on his level. Like, yo, I did this analogy about ants when I was talking to him <laughs> about having the ant farm and stuff, but really, that's not true because you know, we you know we our relationship with ants is nothing like their relationship to all this. Surely, you know, when I when I was at um when I was at uh, Edding. Uh, uh, no, Eddie, no, thank you. <laughs> I, I went, I went to lectures and you know on on, on various topics, and I remember, um, I remember um, uh, one of the topics was um, oh sugar, what did I call it? I've forgotten. Um, yeah, we take a big swig of beer while I'm uh, uh, while I'm uh, homuncular mechanics. That was it. Uh, which is the study of the natural world on like such a tiny level that you know we we can't even in interact with it, never mind see it, and you know about how like the entire all matter is composed of you know teeny tiny working mechanisms, you know cogs and gears on an absolutely minute scale. And I thought you know what if what if there was some kind of civilization that lived among you know matter on on this scale, and 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 our relationship to them would be one more comparable to. To the uh, you know night demons relationship with us or or you know the to supposed relationship of an old god you know why mm. why would why would he care mm. if he is who he says he is which we don't well know, that's but... my yeah, that's exactly my point uh, Daka so yeah so in in your studies Elliot there would have been there's the remember we talked about this there's the combination of religion versus non-religion you know what is religious versus what is natural if you will. Then there is the logic versus the emotion, right? And everything is kind of like in that quadrant of, of items. And it's often been theorized, as you mentioned, that if things could be infinitely large, things can be infinitely small, right? Everything has, its, has, a, uh, has a, a, a counter effect, right? And the largest machines require these cogs, require these wheels, require these springs, require these dials. So conversely, the smallest machines must as well. And, and the body is a machine of types, right? You, you, you know this from your anatomy classes that there are different parts to, to in some uh, individuals, the hearts may be larger than others. The stomachs may be larger or only able to consume certain things. But nonetheless, it is a machine of a kind. So therefore, even the smallest of ants or, or you theorize things that you may not even be able to see currently would, of course, be comprised of these same types of quote unquote machines. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, and like I say, our, our ability to interact with them, our ability to even care about them to some extent, it's a, it's a different, you know, it's just a completely different scale of being, you know. Surely mm. this old god would be have the same... Uh, regard for us you know why does he have these three girls in his possession and why does he care why does he care to make a deal with us yeah and then he says he doesn't care but then he did care a bit because otherwise we would have just he could have just killed them all or given us them all right like it so well it, it's almost as if he treated them like and i don't want to say pets in a term of like they're his pets but it's almost like if you had three pigs Right. And you said, oh, well, this one we're going to slaughter for a meal. This one we're going to sell. And this, you know, whatever. It's just it's it's spoken of on that level. Right. Yeah. But he's that... not getting anything out. He's not selling one for a meal and he's not selling, you know, he's not eating one. And he's, you know, he's not selling one. He's not eating one. He's not. He's not. No, definitely, not but I'm, I'm talking it. about like the level, like his yeah. regard for them. They're no yeah. more that you would you would equate them to almost like no more than livestock. Like. Like how some of those, some of the individuals at at, at the um, but why are they on when that they sell level? their livestock would, would act right. They, they don't care, level, right? <laughs> but why are they on that level? People care exactly. about livestock, that, and that's where the contemplation goes, right? People care about livestock. Well, but only as much as they benefit the individual, right? Yeah, but they're not benefiting him, like as far as we could tell, well, right? That, and that's the question. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. the question because that's the thing that you're all struggling with, right? Why? What benefit is there? And this has been the question that Elliot has been bouncing off of his skull for the last five days, four and a half days, right? Is what is the what's basically what is the cost benefit analysis of this transaction? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. For both parties. Yeah. 
Super interesting. Well, maybe we call his bluff and just tell him to kill all three. I mean, I already kind of did, right? Like, I said, I don't, you know, we don't care, you don't care. Either let them all go or kill them all and <laughs> do whatever, you know? <laughs> Fargo Scarf, do you have any input in this conversation at all? I already no, have I'm, 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 I've ordered a burger and fries and a milkshake. I need that now. They do do what, very what, good milkshakes at the moment. What flavor? What flavor? Uh, strawberry. Mm. So, uh, yeah, so... Um, I'm not. Spread before you then, obviously, Namfoodle, who is well known. <laughs> Doc, I don't think you've met Namfoodle yet, have you? Nope. Because Dimitrov would have brought the manservants in. Um, Daedal has squirreled his way in here before. Daedal knows, Daedal's got a remarkable um, knowledge of the town, right? Just from his time here. He's been in probably 90% of the buildings and is working out how the hell to get in the other 10%, right? <laughs> but Daka, you've never been in here before, have you? Nope. Okay, so this is this is the Rowdy Gnome. This is a very, very well-known gnomish establishment. This is Elliot's haunt, right? And you know that, um, that the hospitality of the gnomish peoples within their inns is legendary right if you were invited into it's very strange there's almost like i, I don't want to you wonder how they make a profit mm -hmm. because even though you pay for your food the umpteen array of food before you is just ridiculous right what what you may pay for a silver at another restaurant would get you 10 times the food here Mm. The only thing that is paid for at the correct costs are the gnomish liquors and alcohols. Everything else is just, there is a spread. If you order breakfast, if you guys order, you know, um, ham and bacon and potatoes, and I mean, there's enough on the table in front of you that, and it's not, and the other, the other amazing part is none of it goes to waste, right? Um, but uh, the spread before you was more than enough to feed each of you probably three times over, including the large humans. Wow. It's, it's interesting. I guess I'm not going to say anything. <laughs> but it's interesting. <laughs> Super interesting. Is I'm showing that he's, I'm showing he's unharmed on my screen. Yeah, yeah, I, I did, I did cheat and look at this. I did look at the, uh, I did look at the thing. Yeah, it's so weird. No, no, that's it? fine. It's barely injured on mine. Yeah, so it's just, weird. I think that's probably your screen catching up, Jim, or something just a little funny. Mm. I mean, when we load a new one, it'll probably come through. Um. So, uh, I address the party, and I just say, guys, we've come so far. Um, <laughs> and tried so hard. But in the end, in the it end, really <laughs> just didn't matter. It never. Never does. I, I tried to lose it all, um, <laughs> <clears throat> but I mean, like we have come so far. We've got six days. Six days. I really need some money. <laughs> <laughs> I really need some money. So, uh, can, uh, can we? No. Well, I mean, like, well, what are we gonna do with these six days? Right? I've got my Hancock's. I'm ready to go. Like, I'm ready to go and do something. We need to do uh, some research. We need to find out something about Night Demon or Old Gods or find somebody who's interacted with them or knows something about them. We need some help because we've got nothing right now, I feel like. I feel like we've got nothing and I feel like we're just sitting here. Um, well, I did wait. say to, to Kalon the turd, I did say that, you know, like he mentioned them being uh, citizens of Victor, so... The, you know they were kind of owed a duty of care by the by the council as it were so I, I did ask him to you know confer with them to see if they had any uh you know input into the matter so maybe we could speak to kale on and see if he's got any feedback it's okay idea, that sounds it? like a good starting point all right the, so the the, fi the five of you so you're heading to Kalon's, right we could do okay so the five of you uh, move down the road. We'll just leave the map here. The five of you uh, move down the road. Um, you return to the seat of government. You know, you walk inside. Again, there's the very familiar face of, 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 of Kalon's men-at-arms. He knows Daka very well. 
Um, Daka leads everybody in. There's a rap on the door from the outside. Kalon opens the door from the inside and, 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 and bays you all come in. Um, I don't believe Kalon's met Elon yet. He gives Elon a little bit of a side eye. Um, but immediately sees on his chest that Elon is still wearing the crest of, um, of, of the Tillich family and immediately puts two and two together that this is um, probably either Dimitriov's or Daka's man now. Um, he assumes he's not going to attach himself to the other two. He never asks. But, um, but Elon is wearing that very proudly. He still bears the, the, the colors of blue and gold. He still bears the Tillich family symbol. Um, and, and you can see that it's, it's a very, very proud thing for him. It's almost as if over the last couple of days, he's resigned himself to carry on what Faps and Finches were doing as far as care for the family. Daka. Yep. Go and ask him. Hello, Kalon. How are you doing? <laughs> so Kalon, uh, I mean, you can see there's a lot of weight on Kalon's brow, right? He is, um, there's something, it's not really bothering him, but he's, he's a little, he's received information or there are situations that have him in deep thought now. And he, and he invites you all to sit down in his office and he says, well, We've gone before the council with the information that you brought, Daka, and and it was indeed determined that these are that the 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 Tillich daughters, whom you believe are the Tillich daughters, would in fact be of the purview of Victa. They are considered citizens of Victa. They were born in and around our area. They did not travel south from Full Point, and it has been determined that even though you may not be able to see it through to the end, we do. We do want to see them return safely to Victa, if at all possible. Mm -hmm. Any any preference what? for the one of the three that we should save? <laughs> if we can only there save is them. absolutely no, no preference be because made. I'm sorry. Say again. I just interject and say, you know, there's no choice to be made. You know, there can be no preference. Well, we so might. What have do you to, suggest? Well, what do you suggest? Do you suggest that we fight them and all die? We can't fight him, right? We've seen him. We've seen him obliterate. More okay, around. so if we can't fight him, we can't fight him. And if how do we he save all three? Us, well, if... no, what I suggest is we we find out you know some other way. But choosing one of them is you know not happening. But we right, might not. Turn... We might not find another way, Elliot. That's the reality of it. Sorry. Yeah, then we will yeah. die trying. Well, I'm not going to die. I don't know about that. I'm, I'm not going to die. Uh, yeah. <laughs> if the choice is if two of them dying or me dying and Dimitriov dying and Flagel Snap dying and Elliot dying, it's 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 two of those three, I'm afraid. Yeah, I kind of agree with Daka. He's talking the logic here, Norm, which I'm surprised at. <laughs> so, Elliot, are you um are you a little worried internally that the emotional side of you is really starting to come out again? Mm. Not particularly. I'm completely at ease with trying to save people's lives. Well, of course, trying to save them. But I mean, this is this is a very passionate plea, like right? Throwing away our We will die trying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's true. I, I, I guess I think to myself that I could have, kind of shouldn't have spoken for the others, but I'm more than willing to, you know, lay down my own life. Yeah, that's okay. That's okay. If that's what you've got to do, Nom. But like. We've we've got to think of contingency plans, right? You can't just go in there saying, sure. "Oh, everything's going to work." You know, but like w gotta... w which daughter do you what? Which daughter do you like best? Can't be the <laughs> contingency plan. So, <laughs> well, I'm so wondering if they, if they knew something, if the you know they they, they might yeah. be privy to something that we're not yeah, the council members. Fair, fair, fair. So, Caleb kind of looks up at you, right? You're having this this small side conversation, and he's allowing it to occur. Obviously, you're you're contemplating this amongst yourselves, and and he says the 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 council has no advice or position on which of the three we don't they've been gone for 10 years you know we knew them as smaller children we you know we did see them grow but there's no we don't i mean with there, we there's the 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 conversation revolves several times around where have they been are they in the same shape is this even them but then the other half of the conversation was, but we have to take the chance because we can't risk it. If it is them, we can't simply consign them to whatever it is they're currently experiencing, if that makes sense. 
Mm. If there's a chance to save even one, that chance must be taken. All three, all the better. And then we will determine if this is indeed them after the fact. If we get down that road, that's when we'll make that determination. We've got it. We've got to cross the first bridge before we can even contemplate the second. That's quite reasonable, Kalon. Hmm. I guess the other point then, seeing as uh, seeing as I'm here and you're here, what about what about the little Jimmy situation? So, okay, so so. <clears throat> Kalon looks at you and says, um, little Jimmy is a curious, he obviously, I obviously reacted very emotionally to what was going on. Little Jimmy needs guidance, obviously. He's coming of the age where he's going to have to start making some decisions in life. And all individuals need at least the guidance of the experience of, 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 of the elders around them to at least mold them in a manner that allows them to make the best possible decisions for themselves. And if you are going to take that upon yourself as a mantle of, of, of responsibility, we still have to discuss what exactly is going to happen when DACA is not here, right? You have no wife, you have no husband, you have no situation that, that, that the individual, he is still, if he were 16, 17, 18, we, this would be a different discussion. We're still dealing with a 10-year-old child. He has a um, party of friends. Mm. He definitely has that. And, and this is one of the reasons why I have considered this. But again, the and, and he almost said the four of you, but he looks at Elon regarding and says, the five of you are obviously going to be asked to go back to this situation. And I've had some conversations with Jimmy. And he did confide in me some of the activities that occurred. And, and, and I, I'm hoping that your idea is not to take him back into that situation. Though I would never you know, judge you twice if he's granted you for protection and you did because it, it will ultimately fall upon your shoulders to make those decisions. And he kind of looks at DACA with like a, a, a half smile like, dude, you took this kid and you had, you know... It, <laughs> <laughs> this kid's already seen some stuff, and maybe that is why, you know, did he feel that he could help enough that that was why he felt he needed to go steal something? Mm -hmm. You know, what, what, why is little Jimmy all of a sudden decided to, to, that I need a crossbow? Mm -hmm. Dimitriov might have to join him on the stealing front. <laughs> <laughs> a couple of thieves. <laughs> I'm already on it. I can teach them everything. <laughs> yeah, the of course, yes, the, actually, that's a good point. So the minute that Kalon says that, right? The minute that Kalon says, you know, why did he feel the need to steal? Flargo just goes, that's life. He doesn't say that, but that's, you know, you're, Flargo, you're just like, dude, you're smart kid. Man, I like this guy. That's, he's, that's, he's, the fir that's the first word I've heard this entire uh uh, time um, I've been so hungover that I haven't actually heard anything or registered anything that's happened around me um, until Kale done question stealing then <laughs> my mind start suddenly starts working just a tiny bit again I'm like dude <laughs> yeah this this um so do you think Florgold now that you know this about little Jimmy that like he's does this endear you to him just a little tiny bit more? Nah, I'm still not really. Or <laughs> wow, like, is there any inclination to maybe assist him along this path? If he wants to, yeah. Wow. I mean, if you're gonna steal, you don't get, you can't get caught, right? Stay. Yeah. So there. Okay. So there oh, it is. Man. So the the thought process is not about, hey, man, he tried to steal a crossbow. It's ah, dumb kid got caught, man. Yeah, basically. So Kalen looks back at Daka and says, "You're just gonna. You're, I mean, where where would he be housed? You're gonna have to think about these things." I mean, I've got, Daka. I've got a, I've got a, I've got a house in 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 Victor, so he can stay there. It'll all be fine, you know. Okay, I might not be there hundred percent of the time, but who is? You know, like it's. I think it's quite reasonable. 
let's um i won't send him off with the church we're going to leave him in their care for now here let's revisit this after you all return to do whatever it is that needs to be done for these girls i don't think we can make any snap decisions here we also don't know what's going to happen in the meantime mm. um i don't think it's i don't think i could i could make the decision right here and right now that he shouldn't go with them but i also don't think that it's a decision that he should go with them right now either okay um i will say this we will make sure that he gets some time away how does that sound that's good so elliot immediately you kind of think of nam foodle right immediately that this kind of comes to your mind that you know this is a this is you now know that this young man is a is an orphan you now know that this young man should be fed and kept and and it is not it it would not be an insult for you to ask nam foodle to kind of take this upon herself while you're gone to just look in on him invite him in for a bite or two make sure that his belly's full give him something to do maybe in the in the manner of uh, of cleaning chopping some light wood just things that'll keep his day moving well where, where is he staying is he staying in daka's place at the moment while no he's away? staying at the church oh well, well he can he can live in my room he can, you know, i'm sure we can find him a space at the rowdy gnome if you know it should, it should be nicer than living in the church right Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. I mean, what, 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 what do you think, Kalon? Would you accept that, or must he remain in the church? And and Kalon knows Namfoodle very well, right? And, and the minute you offer up Namfoodle, I mean, immediately he's like, "No, there's." I'd be more than comfortable with that. I would have to talk to the um, to the to the priest at the church to make sure that they're because they're they're caring for him now. Um, they're doing a very good job of it. He's not having a good time. We know this. But they are feeding him, clothing him. They are educating him as best they can. He takes reading lessons daily now, writing lessons daily now. Um, this is not something that that would not happen with Nam Foodle either. She would, you you know, knowing the Gnomish peoples, you would definitely continue that that type of an education. Mm. That sounds the boy perfect, needs a mother, not a priest. <laughs> yeah. What did you say, Dimmy? The boy needs a mother, not a priest. Well, the boy needs something, right? Because he's growing up and, and he's... What we don't want to see is we don't want him... You know, He's not consigning himself to a life of crime, but everybody's like, dude, what's next, right? If we keep letting this boy live on the streets, he's got to become a man eventually. That type of thing, you know, that, that moniker. Yeah, Daka, you need to talk to him at some point. Hmm. And straighten him out but elliot yeah you would have to have a conversation with nam foodle to kind of solidify this definitely but um but Kalen would be very open to something like that well let, let, let's do it then i'll go back and talk to nam foodle i mean i'm sure she'll be agreeable he's you know less trouble to look after than i am probably <laughs> um, <laughs> Easily. Easily. doc is there anything else that that you have for Kalen at all and then at this point i open up my cloak <laughs> and say want some scimitars <laughs> So he looks at you with a, with a smirk on his face, and he says, "How many people did you guys kill?" <laughs> a few All of them. <laughs> All of them. So um, he's going to turn down to the, the use of those scimitars. He's already got twelve to fifteen. He points to the barrel, right? He's like, "We're good now, Daka. I would suggest that you sell those off, and I would suggest that 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 you." Be a little bit more discerning in what it is that you bring back from your adventures. <laughs> oh, dude. Oh, fair enough. What about daggers? I've got loads of daggers too. Do you want daggers? No, no, we're good. We're good. Okay. I can't. I can't let this be a be a DACA off sourcing. Basically, <laughs> <laughs> this is not like um, what's it, what's that freaking oh god, Dimitriov? What's that game with uh? Oh my god. Oh, my god. PS5 game where you can just bring back everything you want and keep selling it off. Oh. With the dragons. With the dragons, uh. Dragonborn. Whatever it is. Spyro. Anyway. Spyro. Spyro, yeah, Spyro. <laughs> Whatever it is. Right. Um. Well, yeah, I think that's everything then. Yep, that sounds all pretty good. Well, we haven't learned anything, like. 
Well, yeah, hang on a minute. Yeah, can we? Can you point us in some kind of direction, Kalon? We, we'd like to find some way out of this mess, but we, we know nothing about Old Ones or Night Demon. Do you know whether anybody who's ever had any kind of interaction with him or any other old god or who might know where to go to talk to somebody like that or has some information of any kind? So he looks immediately at you and he says, I, I apologize, the council has no no input one way or another on this subject. Um, you know, it, it, this is not something that, in fact, one of the council members even questioned whether or not the situation occurred. Excuse me? Excuse they're quite, me? They're not, you know, they're, they're, there's, there's, a, there's an honest wondering of what you actually found there not that the situation itself didn't happen but whether or not this is an old god to, to be honest you're a bunch of morons and naysayers and uh, doubters and i question your sanity if you uh, question our uh, our honesty Get him, Froggle Snop. How we, about... we don't question the, the i shouldn't say we the council does not question your honesty the council questions who the individual is that you were having this discussion with. Yeah. Well, yeah. well we yeah. question that as well. Yeah. 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 So that's yeah. where the council has no real input. We wouldn't even know, they wouldn't even know where to start on that, on that line. All that they know is that there's an opportunity to return three citizens of Victa to Victa, and that is the only concern of theirs at yeah, this but point. But at what cost? I'm sorry, say again? At what cost? What would you give him in exchange for the three daughters? What are we you don't willing... even know what, what him. We don't what, even know what, what he wants. What, what are you willing to give for the exchange of three citizens of Victor? How does one hundred and ninety gold sound? Eh? <laughs> well, no, like just like honestly, like the only way I can see is if we give him a better offer, right? And well, if you're uh, if you're the one who wants to like protect the citizens of Victor, what cost would you go to to offer him in exchange for the three daughters? And then even if you don't believe us, whether it, this entity is real or whatever, where, like, how far are you prepared to go to get these three back? And in, in that case, then we can offer that to him. Good. Well, the council's position is that the four or five of you should return and discern exactly that. Um, the problem well, so we is, have, we have, we to 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 date, the council has no offer of any kind, and the council, I'm sure you understand, isn't going to start negotiating from a position of, we don't even know where they want to start. So you want to, <clears throat> so, like, if we come back with one, is that satisfactory, or is is it all free? The or position nothing? is to return with what you can, ah, uh. but. The goal is to bring back all three because they're all citizens. And what would you be willing between, to offer? Between you and me, the council has nobody else to turn to. And, and what the would council you be... is not going to send the city guard. The council's not going to send me. But what would you be willing to offer? The problem is we, 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 we don't know what to offer. Like the, the exactly. guy was so and Kaylon agrees and right there. He, uh, you know, the, there is no logic to this situation, unfortunately. He's just some kind of raving lunatic. Think, well, fingers then we just crossed, take, Elliot. We take the one daughter and then we bail. Fingers crossed he really likes scimitars. <laughs> well, we just take the one daughter and bail. I mean, honestly, if <clears throat> if he's not reasonable, then there's nothing we can do, right? You, you, can't, you can't negotiate with a madman. Well, we've, we've got... Gentlemen, keep talking six... about this. i gotta, I got to move away for one sec here. Where is Kalon going? Come back, Magistrate! This is in- Oh, dear. <laughs> <laughs> We've got six days. <laughs> we might as well make use of it. We, we uh, might as well honestly, do all we can in these six days. Honest. Well, did we try and offer him anything else last time? I think we did. I think we said, like, do you want anything I offered him myself. Yeah, he wouldn't take that. Well, I mean, I wouldn't. <laughs> all right, we'll, we'll find somebody more worthy. Maybe little Jimmy will be willing to lay down his Whoa. life. <laughs> Keep your hands off, little Jimmy. I, I, feel like that was out of character. I feel that was out of character because. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry, I was out of character. I, I cannot sorry, sorry. believe. I was, no, I, I, I was getting carried away. <laughs> I was getting carried away. 
<laughs> Keep little Jimmy out of this, you monster. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know, guys. I don't know. It's tough, isn't it? I mean... There's a, there is a library in Victor, I think. I think we we could look there, but I mean, I don't. What think like any way to banish him or dis like dispel the, him? Or... The, the thing is, like again, out of character. Like I read about old god. I don't know if what Jack Bull is portraying is the same thing or not, right? But like they they can barely even enter our realm because they're so like you know detached from it. They need some kind of anchoring um, thing apparently, but I don't know if that's what Jack Bull is going for or not. And obviously, we don't know that. I guess at this point. Well, maybe so, that's the mansion. That's maybe what Mola Ram did, yeah. And maybe that's the the whole thing with there needs to be a Tilluk in Tilluk mansion. Ooh, well, that is a good point, right? And something we might realise, Dagger, is that may maybe we have to reverse what Mola Ram did. Mm. Maybe we have to well, find out what he was doing and reverse it. I wonder if we could talk to those cultists again. Oh yeah, there are the two cultists still, aren't there? But they're they're not they're not very compliant. Uh, did. Kalon did mention those two to me um, the last time I was here, you, you know. But um, I guess we could go and interrogate them ourselves, couldn't we? Interrogate them very kindly, yes. Very kindly, yes. Yeah. Only m m a required amount of torture. Yeah. When I, 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 I'm off to the Rowdy Gnome. <laughs> you three should probably go and uh, speak to them yourself. <laughs> <laughs> We're not going to torture him, don't worry. <laughs> Don't so, worry. so Kalon, so during this conversation, right, Kalon just reiterates the position of the council, right? Which, you know, please remember that this initially started with a simple double check of, of a manor, hmm. right? And this has escalated very fast. Mm. You know, fault it's, nobody's fault. And the council understands that. But to expect the, the, you know, what was initially supposed to be a, essentially a welfare check has turned into the potential kidnapping and or possession of three of our townsfolk, the destruction of a cult, and now the reaction of how to get these individuals out from, a, from, from an individual whom we have no idea what their motivations are. On powers so it's not that they don't want to make a decision. It's not that they don't want to make a decision. There's not enough information to make a decision on this. Like this is potentially world-ending, like world-changing power, right? Like this is insane from a from a like go and check out a manor <laughs> to like. It, it, it's exa and then that's kind of it's 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 like when you you know you're in your home and you're like oh there's a little hole in the wall and then you dig it open and you find out there's termites running through your entire frame, right? <laughs> And um, and now the house is starting to fall around. So that is, it's not that the that the the council is trying to avoid you or avoid making a decision. There's not enough information for them to make a decision on this. The only information that they have is that there's three of their townsfolk, and that those townsfolk should be brought back as soon as possible. Three great, we'll take whatever we can get. But we also understand that we can't simply tell you, you must bring back three or don't come back because mm. they know that that would be just as unfair. Yep. Um, <laughs> right, do we want to Do we want to see if we can talk to these cultists then? Do you think that's a good idea? Talk to the cultists. I mean, we don't that's need about to the only them. lead we have, isn't it? Yeah, we don't need to torture them, Elliot. You can come with us. We're not going to torture them. They've been tortured loads, Kalon said anyway. So, like, then, you know, we've just got to ask them and hope that they tell us. <laughs> Very well. I think. Okay, so um, you usually I'd make a roll for this, but I don't even think you need to make a roll. I think Kalon would just allow you access to them, right? Because at this point, you have nothing to go on, right? Like, as you mentioned, this is your only lead at this point. So Kalon leads you down into what is ostensibly a basement with four cells. There's four cells down here, right? And in each of these, in two of the four cells are, you, <coughs> excuse me, you recognize the cult, <coughs> excuse me, you recognize the cultists. They're no longer in their robes. They're in whites, all whites. They're slightly dirty, but I mean, like you could tell like if, if these individuals were to escape, you could, you would spot them instantly like running down the street. They're, they're, the outfits are made to stick out, right? 
They've got skull caps on um, to cover their hair. Um, they're not manacled or anything. Uh, they're in front of them are a couple of tins of bread and a couple of flagons of water. They don't look any of the worse for wear. I'm sorry. Did you say tins of bread? Yeah, like like tins, tin containers, oh, and there's bread laying in them. Wow. <laughs> that is so weird. He's a man. <laughs> we, we, we don't even need to torture him, guys. Like, obviously, <laughs> like, how, how do you even make toast? How do you what? <laughs> like, honestly, if you've got tin of bread, like, you, you've suffered enough. Like, what do you think like, he's going to feed him? Man foodles like, food? Like, he puts bread in a tin. Yeah, that's <laughs> super weird. They've got to have something to hold it in. Jesus Christ, Amy. Okay, there's two wooden plates with bread on top of it. Does that sound better? Oh, <laughs> yeah. Oh. Okay, now that we've solved that problem. It's my immersion, man. It's my immersion. I, I just can't handle tins of bread, mate. I'm sorry. Right, it's that, weird. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so so we haven't yet discovered aluminum, so we'll go with <laughs> I mean, even if you had, why would you put bread in it? Why would you spell it wrong and pronounce it wrong? But anyway. <laughs> so anyway, so, um, and there again, you, you recognize the two cultists. There's the one who's, he's still, I mean, I don't want to call him possessed, but he's very, you can see in his eyes, man, he's fanatical, right? And then there's the other one who's like, he looks like the little brother who was brought along for the robbery. <laughs> right, well, let's talk to him. Let's so talk to the, the less fanatical one. Okay. Right, and uh, I just got to say to him, like, look, uh, you know, we know, like, you were in the cult and that, it's fine, right, it's done now, right? Molaram summoned the night demon. I don't know if he mentioned the night demon The minute you. that you say that, the other cultist, the one who's, like, steely like, rises to his feet instantly mm -hmm. and takes hold of the bars and just brings his face right up to the bars mm -hmm. and is instantly, like... <laughs> right, and it's, it's not like scared. It's it's just instantly at attention. All right. Well, the night demon wasn't particularly impressed with Molaram, and exploded him into a red mist. <laughs> he just instantly killed him, and uh... and then and then he says from behind you in a song, and not not like, like a hard whisper, like you were in his presence. Uh, I think it's probably best to ignore him. And and you know keep him you know as soon as you've got a bit of keenness right keep him keep him a bit keen <laughs> and just keep talking to the the weaker one and then so uh, so you know you might have wanted to summon this guy but you know I don't think he wanted to be summoned and uh, and now you know he is very powerful and he's just out for himself so if there's any way that we can like but you know if you know how he was summoned and if there's if you know any way we could unsummon him. Do you know anything? Anything that could help us? So what's your... Are you saying it kind of like that? Is this like just a casual conversation? Very casual. Are you being... Very yeah. casual. Very so calm. Give me a... Give me a uh, what is it? Give me a persuasion roll. Please. Persuasion. Oh. oh, by the way, everybody, if you don't have it already, take um, inspiration for each of the ballads. Those ballads were excellent. Oh, glorious. Thanks. <laughs> All right, so a 15. So he looks up at you. This is the one that's kind of broken, right? That's the mm. one you're talking about? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So he doesn't rise up. He's still kind of sitting in a corner. You can just kind of see that he's... I hate to say it because we know what the cultists were doing, so we don't want to like let him off easy, right? But... If there was ever a victim of circumstance, this guy's playing that role, <laughs> right? Yeah, the wrong guy sure. in the wrong time at the wrong location. And that's kind of the way he's, he seems, but you, your mind goes back to chopping up of humans, chopping up of horses, throwing stuff at these worms. This guy was attacking you. It's not like he was, you know, um, screaming, Oh, they've, you know, they've got me and, and they're forcing me to do this against my will. Right. Mm. And he's, He's sitting in, on the ground. His arms are around the fronts of his knees. And he never, like, looks up or makes eye contact with you. And he goes, and he just says, he did it. He was, he, he actually did it. Yeah, he did. He did. And, like, so you may have thought that that's what you wanted. And he may have thought that's what he wanted. But he didn't get anything out of it. 
And you, have, you two haven't got anything out of it. So, is there any way that... Do you know of any way that we could possibly resolve this? Were you going to say something too, Elliot? No, oh, I just said he got squished. He got squished, he did. <laughs> so, the, the, the other one behind you whispers again, and it's in a, in a harder whisper. What was it like? What, what, tell me, tell me about it. What was it like? Tell me the feeling. What, what, what happened? Tell me, tell me, tell me. And the oh. other one looks, uh, still looking down between his knees, just says, then it's done. He actually did it. Hmm. We were not shared anything. We were promised power. Hmm. The ones who decided to to become the abominations had ascended. That would have been my destiny as well. I didn't have the courage to see it through. And he just, his, his, his head slumps down even further between his knees. Almost as like, again, one of those guys who just, he got to the edge of the cliff, but just couldn't jump off. <laughs> he couldn't drink the Kool-Aid. How does that sound? <laughs> oh man. So I guess at this point, Got to turn to the one, you know, now that we've got the other one on the hook a bit. Got to try to, like, reel him in. <laughs> and hope that the other one will spill some beans. So then turn to the turn to his, turn to the, the fanatical one and, be, you know, try and cook something out of him, I guess. So he looks up at you. I mean, the minute you turn around, he's like eye contact to eye contact right away. He goes, tell me, what did he look like? What, what was his appearance? Was it what they said it would be? What did they say it would be? Nobody, they, 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 there's so many questions. Was he, all we knew was the skulls, the skulls. <laughs> there were some skulls, yeah. But I mean, I've got some questions for you. I'll tell you everything you want to know if you tell me what I want to know. <laughs> you have to take me. You have to take me. You've got to get me out of here and take me. No. Oh. oh, do you know what, right? At this point, we'll, we'll have a signal that we'd obviously worked out beforehand. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> I, I'll signal to the other three. Uh, I, I guess, yeah, maybe it's don't take fit, uh, don't take uh, thingy here because he might might want to kill them, right? What, oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's me. It's me. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like he's saying kiss me. <laughs> I know. <laughs> that, that disgusting bastard. <laughs> uh, what, what's the Elon? Right, obviously Elon right, might want to just kill them, right? So we probably shouldn't take Elon down here. No, e Elon would be more controlled now. Elon okay. realizes that there is a uh, there's a purpose here. He doesn't like them. He's making eye contact like you mother. You know, like you know, I mean, there's. But he's he's going to listen to Dimitriov at this point. Okay. If so, you don't want him there, that's fine too. But don't think that Elon's like going to you know break ranks and just start stabbing him with a dagger. That's not no, going to happen. Okay, good. So yes, yeah, so we can we can huddle up away from away from this chap. And, and whisper to each other and think uh, maybe we could take him and see if we could <laughs> see if we could offer him his death. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, to, I would be interesting to see. Mm. See how they react. That's see how that's nice you react. Like you, the uh, the cultist is making taking a step towards us. Um, so I <laughs> hold up my hand to stop him, and accidentally out shoots a fireball. Um, accidentally? Yeah, I have no control <laughs> that over it. more than an accidentally. <laughs> I have no control over it. It's a new magic to me. It's a it's a power that I can't stop. Um, I have no control over it. Um, especially in my hungover state. Uh, I mean, you you need you need like bat guano. Well, no, he's got a roll to hit. We'll never <laughs> hit it anyway. Guano. Yeah, yeah. Let, let's let's move back. Let's, I'm not going to allow that. <laughs> what? I'm sorry. <laughs> as as fun as that sounds, you would incinerate the entire party. So, <laughs> um, but we can. So because some of his magic is is of a wild nature, right? Is draconic. He's he does he can't control. He doesn't know his power to a point. Um, but he's right. As you guys kind of move away from the cage. He would corner himself as closely as he could to you, right? So, like, he's gonna he's gonna follow you and move along this cage. Um, I'm trying to think. 
what I would allow in this situation because I don't not like it for, for purposes of role play. I just don't think a fireball would be the first thing that would shoot out of this goblin's hand. Considering you know, this is now that I've reached level five, it manifests somehow, and this is the way. Well, yeah, but this is, but it's again, really, as, as this is it. a, this is a spell. This isn't a power, so there are, you know, there are components to this spell. Exactly that I need when I learn to control it. So, like I said, I, I, if if you want to do something a, a, a little less party destroying no, we can, talk, we can definitely nothing. talk about that i also don't think kalon would appreciate if the entire place fell down and then you guys had to talk your way through I, that that's the best part <laughs> <laughs> so what does the huddle consist of just like just as going in the corner so that we could you know talk without him hearing basically just just talk about the whether we whether you know whether we should take him whether we should take him with us to the uh to see Night Demon. I, pretty, yeah, I think that's okay. I think we could do. I don't I, hate the plan. Yeah, I'm I'm in agreement, Dacker. Hmm. Okay. Good, good. At least we all agree. I I think Dimitrov agrees. He usually agrees when he's got a... I don't know. <laughs> when he's I got a know. visor in his hand. I think we should uh, go to a library and learn about the old gods, to be fair. Like... I do like the sound of that a lot. That's what I want to do. Mm. I feel yeah, like we know yeah. nothing about the old gods, so mm. we should try and learn what we can. I want to go to the Gnomish library in whatever town is Steelberry. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, but how do, far away is Steelberry? Yeah, there, there's there's a travel aspect to that, definitely. How yeah. far away is it? So, Elliot, you would estimate about four days travel one direction. Oh, okay, so it's not... That it's is not... definitely what I want to do. Well, it's not an option now. Well, it is, though. We have the ring, right? Mm. Oh, what, we so can we can travel talk four days and then teleport to the... Yeah, uh... yeah. Yeah, I like the sound of that a lot. <laughs> um... So here we go, right? So here's the thing. So we've got, we've, we've got to resolve. I, 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 I'm down for this as well. But we've got to resolve it with this fella, right? While we're here, first of all. Um, so we can go back to him after after the huddling up. We can go back to him and say, "Well, we can just take him." Yeah, maybe we will take you. Uh, maybe we. Oh, so maybe when we you can... say that, right? Like this, this, this disgusting smile appears on his on his face, right? Like mm. this, this wretched, just. It's a cultist smile, right? It's like it's a it's fanatical. Oh, actually, nature. rewind, rewind, rewind a little bit. <laughs> so <laughs> the smile as... goes away backwards. <laughs> <laughs> like, like like Blood Bowl two with the cracked screen and the reroll thing. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. So um, so here's the thing. So if our plan is to go to Steel we're gonna have to take him with us, right? Because we're, he's gonna have to be with us to be yeah. teleported. Yeah. So we need to ask Kalon right now if we can assume control of the prisoner and take him with us, please. So is that what you're doing? Yes, Kalon deterred. Okay. <laughs> so you leave, you head back up to Kalon's office. And oh, Kalon did he not come did... with us? Did he not come with no, us? No, he took you down there and then turned. Right, well, in that case, we will go to him and say, maybe we'll take you, and then we'll go upstairs. <laughs> 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 so yeah, so you're back in Kalon's office. He's you know he's, so you know you give him the, the 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 small interactive, the small back and forth that occurred, and he says to you, he says, I would have to discuss this with the council, but I I I am reasonably sh sure that they will release him in your custody. They, again, you have no leads, you have nothing. We need to do our best to provide you with as much as we can that is within our power. Um, if you remember the gray. We would release him in your custody. Um, whatever would happen to him <laughs> is fine. Uh, however, if he does return, we, we, we would reserve the right that you return him here if he is still alive to face justice. Absolutely. And that's, that's a big if. <laughs> and, and, and that's what he said. I mean, he knows. He's like, you know, there, there's a good chance you guys are going to toss him into a fire somewhere, right? I mean... <laughs> Not happening. This is not a, this is this is probably not an individual who is even though Elliot would honor life this is probably not an individual who is recuperable if that makes sense. Yeah. I mean he's 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 over the edge. He would drink the Kool-Aid in a second. 
<laughs> He'd be the purveyor of the Kool-Aid. <laughs> yeah, he probably carries the Kool-Aid around, yeah. Right, well, it's about we're about half an, an hour and a half in. Do, do you want to have a little break? That's what I was about to say. So um, where would you go after this? Would you head back to... Um... To the Rowdy Gnome, is that where our next to kind of contemplate what the hell's going on? Well, well if we're going to travel, then time is of the essence, right? Yeah, yeah we, we, we need, need to, to start traveling now. Yeah, we need to either make travel preparations. How long would it take to uh, Kalon to ask the, to get word from the council? He could have it back to you by this afternoon. This afternoon, so we could make travel. He'd have to travel because there's no formal council today. So as he's allowed to, he would travel to each of their manors, mm. discuss it with them separately, figure out what the plan is, and then and then get it done. So but like can, he says, it's 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 pretty. He just has to get approval. Is is what it is. It's right. So whatever travel preparations we would have to make, because like we want to we want to set off as soon as possible, right? So we'll just make whatever travel preparations are required. I guess. I want to travel on a kangaroo. <laughs> <laughs> this is not in Australia. Okay, so um, so yeah, so let's take our first break. We'll come back. We'll rally up back at the um, back at the Rowdy Gnome where we can pick up provisions, all of that good stuff. You know, get all of that stuff done. Then uh, ostensibly you would meet back at Kalon's, and then you're out, right? You want to, you're you're on your way. Uh, time is of the essence, type deal. Glorious, right? All right, let's take a break, gentlemen. Thank you. Yep. Thanks, everyone. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe, and stay fantastic. <laughs>